Once, in the dead of night, when the hospital corridors lay silent, save for the occasional echo of distant footsteps, Nurse Emily found herself on the graveyard shift. It was a stormy night, the rain pelting against the windows like a desperate plea for entry. Emily was making her rounds, checking on patients in their rooms, when she noticed a flickering light at the end of a deserted hallway. Curiosity gripped her, and she ventured closer, her footsteps echoing ominously in the empty corridor. As she approached, the flickering light revealed itself to be coming from an old, abandoned wing of the hospital a wing that had been closed off for decades due to a tragic fire. Ignoring the warnings ringing in her mind, Emily pressed on, driven by an inexplicable force. The air grew colder, and the atmosphere grew heavier with each step she took. Finally, she reached the source of the flickering light an old-fashioned oil lamp sitting atop a rusted metal table. But it was what lay beyond the table that froze Emily's blood. Standing in the dim light was a figure draped in tattered hospital scrubs, its face obscured by shadows. Emily's heart raced as she tried to make sense of what she was seeing. Was it a ghost? A hallucination brought on by exhaustion. Before she could gather her wits, the figure spoke a hollow, disembodied voice that seemed to echo from the depths of the earth itself. You shouldn't be here, it whispered, sending shivers down Emily's spine. This place is cursed. With a trembling hand, Emily reached for a radio to call for help, but as she did, the figure vanished into thin air, leaving only the flickering lamp behind. Terrified, Emily fled from the abandoned wing, vowing never to return. In the days that followed, Emily couldn't shake the feeling of unease that had settled over her. Strange occurrences plagued the hospital equipment malfunctioned, patients reported seeing shadowy figures in the night, and whispers of voices echoed through the halls when no one was there. Some say that Nurse Emily never recovered from her encounter in the abandoned wing, haunted by the memory of the ghostly figure she had seen that stormy night. And to this day, the old wing remains sealed off, a grim reminder of the horrors that lurk within the walls of the hospital. Nay lies what she had seen, the memory of the ghostly figure continued to haunt her every waking moment. One evening, while on duty in the ICU, Emily was attending to a patient in a dimly lit room at the far end of the corridor. The patient, an elderly woman named Mises Thompson, had been admitted with severe respiratory distress. As Emily checked Mises Thompson's vitals, she couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. A chill ran down Emily's spine as she glanced towards the doorway, half expecting to see the ghostly figure from the abandoned wing standing there once again. But the doorway was empty, save for the faint glow of the hallway lights filtering in through the cracked door. Trying to push aside her fears, Emily focused on Mises Thompson, administering her medication and adjusting her oxygen levels. But as she turned to leave the room, a strange sound caught her attention a soft, rasping whisper that seemed to emanate from the shadows themselves. Help me, the voice whispered, barely audible above the hum of the medical equipment. Emily froze, her heart pounding in her chest. She scanned the room frantically, searching for the source of the voice, but there was no one there. With trembling hands, Emily reached for the call button to summon help, but before she could press it, Mrs. Thompson's hand shot out and grabbed her wrist with surprising strength. Emily gasped in shock, her eyes widening in terror as she stared into Mrs. Thompson's sunken, lifeless eyes. Help me, Mrs. Thompson whispered again, her voice barely more than a hoarse whisper. But this time, it wasn't Mrs. Thompson's voice that Emily heard it was the voice of the ghostly figure from the abandoned wing, echoing through the room like a death knell. With a cry of fear, Emily wrenched her hand free from Mrs. Thompson's grasp and stumbled backwards, fleeing from the room in a blind panic. She didn't stop running until she reached the safety of the hospital's main lobby, where she collapsed onto a nearby bench, gasping for breath. From that day on, Nurse Emily refused to work the night shift alone, haunted by the memory of Mrs. Thompson's ghostly plea for help. And though she tried to convince herself that it had all been a hallucination brought on by stress and exhaustion, she could never shake the feeling that something malevolent lurked within the hospital's walls, waiting to claim its next victim. As days turned into weeks, Nurse Emily's anxiety only seemed to deepen. 
Every shift brought with it a new sense of foreboding, as if the hospital itself was conspiring to keep her trapped within its walls. She couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched, that unseen eyes followed her every move. One fateful night, as Emily made her rounds through the deserted corridors, she heard a faint scratching sound coming from one of the supply closets. Curiosity mingled with fear as she approached cautiously, her footsteps echoing loudly in the empty hallway. With trembling hands, Emily reached for the closet door, her heart hammering in her chest. As she swung the door open, a wave of icy cold air washed over her, sending shivers down her spine. But what she saw inside made her blood run cold. There, huddled in the corner of the closet, was a gaunt figure wrapped in tattered hospital linens. Its eyes gleamed with a malevolent light as it gazed up at Emily with an expression that sent a chill down her spine. Help me, it whispered, its voice barely more than a raspy whisper. Emily recoiled in horror, stumbling backwards in shock. She recognized the figure instantly it was Mrs. Thompson, the patient she had cared for in the ICU, only now she appeared more like a wraith than a living being. But before Emily could react, Mrs. Thompson lunged forward with surprising speed, her hands grasping for Emily's throat with an otherworldly strength. Emily screamed in terror, her cries echoing through the empty corridors as she struggled to break free from Mrs. Thompson's grasp. In a desperate bid for survival, Emily fought back with all her strength, clawing at Mrs. Thompson's face and kicking wildly in an attempt to free herself. But it was no use Mrs. Thompson's grip was unyielding, her fingers like steel vices around Emily's throat. Just when it seemed that all hope was lost, a security guard happened upon the scene, drawn by Emily's screams. With a swift motion, he wrenched Mrs. Thompson away from Emily, sending her sprawling to the ground. Gasping for breath, Emily scrambled to her feet, her eyes wide with terror as she watched Mrs. Thompson writhe and thrash on the ground, her features contorted in rage. And then, as suddenly as she had appeared, Mrs. Thompson vanished into thin air, leaving nothing behind but a lingering sense of dread. In the aftermath of the incident, Nurse Emily resigned from her position at the hospital, unable to cope with the trauma of what she had experienced. But even as she tried to move on with her life, she couldn't shake the feeling that the hospital's dark secrets still haunted her, lurking just beneath the surface, waiting to claim their next victim. In the heart of a bustling city, nestled among towering skyscrapers and bustling streets, stood St. Margaret's Hospital a sprawling complex of gleaming corridors and sterile rooms. But beyond its polished exterior lay a dark secret that few dared to speak of. One fateful night, as Nurse Samantha embarked on her nightly rounds, she couldn't shake the feeling of unease that gnawed at her insides. The hospital seemed different at night quieter, more somber, as if it held its breath in anticipation of the horrors that lurked in the shadows. As Samantha made her way through the dimly lit corridors, a sense of foreboding settled over her like a suffocating blanket. The air felt heavy with the weight of unseen eyes watching her every move, and the silence was deafening, broken only by the distant hum of medical equipment. But it was when Samantha reached the old wing of the hospital a wing that had long been abandoned after a mysterious fire claimed the lives of several patients that her unease turned to outright fear. The air grew colder, and the atmosphere grew thick with a sense of malevolence that sent shivers down Samantha's spine. Ignoring the warnings echoing in her mind, Samantha pressed on, her footsteps echoing ominously in the empty corridor. It was then that she heard it a soft, plaintive moan that seemed to emanate from the darkness itself. Cautiously, Samantha followed the sound, her heart pounding in her chest. It led her to a door at the end of the hallway a door that had been sealed shut for years, its surface marred by scorch marks from the fire that had ravaged the wing. With trembling hands, Samantha reached for the door, her breath catching in her throat. She pushed it open slowly, her pulse racing with a mixture of fear and anticipation. What she saw on the other side would haunt her for the rest of her days. Standing in the center of the room was a figure draped in tattered hospital scrubs, its face obscured by shadows. Samantha's blood ran cold as she realized that she was face to face with a ghost a remnant of the tragedy that had unfolded in the old wing all those years ago. 
but before Samantha could react, the ghostly figure spoke a hollow, disembodied voice that seemed to echo from the depths of the earth itself. Help me, it whispered, its words sending a chill down Samantha's spine. Unable to tear her eyes away, Samantha listened as the ghost recounted the events of that fateful night the screams of the patients trapped in their beds, the flames consuming everything in their path, the desperate attempts to escape that ended in tragedy. As the ghostly figure faded away into the darkness, Samantha was left standing alone in the abandoned wing, her mind reeling from the encounter. She knew that she had stumbled upon something beyond her comprehension something that defied explanation. From that day on, Samantha couldn't shake the feeling that the hospital was hiding secrets far darker than anyone could imagine. And though she tried to convince herself that it had all been a hallucination brought on by stress and exhaustion, she couldn't escape the nagging feeling that the truth was far more sinister than she dared to believe. In the days following her encounter in the old wing, nurse Samantha found herself haunted by the ghostly figure she had seen. Sleep eluded her, her nights filled with restless tossing and turning as she relived the chilling events over and over again in her mind. During her shifts, Samantha couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Shadows seemed to dance in the corners of her vision, and strange noises echoed through the empty corridors when she was alone. Despite her best efforts to rationalize what she had seen, the memory of the ghostly figure lingered like a dark cloud over her every waking moment. One particularly stormy night, Samantha was assigned to the night shift in the ICU a task she approached with a sense of dread. The hospital seemed eerily quiet, the rain hammering against the windows like a relentless drumbeat. As Samantha made her rounds, checking on patients in their rooms, she couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The atmosphere in the ICU was heavy with tension, as if the very walls were closing in around her. It was then that Samantha heard it a soft, rhythmic tapping coming from one of the patient rooms. Curiosity mingled with fear as she approached cautiously, her heart pounding in her chest. Pushing open the door, Samantha stepped inside and froze in horror at the sight that greeted her. Standing in the center of the room was a figure cloaked in darkness, its features obscured by shadows. In its hand, it held a scalpel its gleaming blade catching the dim light. Samantha's blood ran cold as she realized that she was face to face with the ghostly figure once again. But this time, there was something different about it something more menacing, more malevolent. With a sense of dread creeping over her, Samantha backed away slowly, her eyes fixed on the figure before her. But before she could make her escape, the ghostly figure lunged forward with startling speed, its eyes burning with an otherworldly intensity. In a blind panic, Samantha turned and fled from the room, her heart racing with terror. She could hear the figure's footsteps echoing behind her, each step growing louder and more menacing with every passing moment. Just when it seemed that all hope was lost, Samantha stumbled upon a security guard making his rounds. With a cry for help, she collapsed into his arms, her breath coming in ragged gasps as she struggled to compose herself. Together, they searched the ICU, but found no trace of the ghostly figure that had pursued Samantha. It was as if it had vanished into thin air, leaving nothing behind but a lingering sense of dread. In the days that followed, Samantha couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched that the ghostly figure was still out there, lurking in the shadows, waiting to strike again. And though she tried to convince herself that it had all been a figment of her imagination, she knew deep down that the truth was far more terrifying than she dared to believe. Despite her efforts to dismiss the encounter as a product of stress or exhaustion, Nurse Samantha found herself increasingly consumed by fear and paranoia. Each shift at the hospital became a nerve-wracking ordeal, her senses heightened, alert for any sign of the ghostly presence that seemed to haunt the corridors. As days turned into weeks, Samantha's colleagues began to notice a change in her demeanor. Once known for her calm and collected nature, she now appeared jittery and on edge, jumping at the slightest sound and constantly glancing over her shoulder as if expecting to see something lurking in the shadows. Concerned for her well-being, Samantha's supervisor suggested she take some time off to rest and recuperate, but Samantha refused. She was determined to confront whatever malevolent force had taken hold of the hospital, no matter the cost. One night, as Samantha prepared to begin her shift, 
a sense of grim determination settled over her. Armed with nothing but her courage and a small flashlight, she ventured into the old wing of the hospital, determined to uncover the truth behind the haunting. The air in the abandoned wing was thick with dust and decay, the silence oppressive. Samantha's footsteps echoed loudly in the empty corridor as she made her way deeper into the darkness, her heart pounding in her chest. Suddenly, she heard a faint whispering coming from somewhere ahead. Squaring her shoulders, Samantha pressed on, her flashlight casting long, eerie shadows on the walls. As she rounded a corner, she stumbled upon a scene that froze her in her tracks. There, in the center of the hallway, stood the ghostly figure she had encountered before, surrounded by a swirling vortex of darkness. Its eyes gleamed with an otherworldly light as it reached out towards Samantha with spectral hands. With a cry of defiance, Samantha charged forward, her heart pounding in her chest. She could feel the oppressive weight of the darkness bearing down on her, threatening to engulf her completely. But just as she thought all hope was lost, Samantha felt a surge of power welling up inside her a spark of inner strength that she hadn't known she possessed. With a burst of determination, she raised her flashlight high and banished the darkness with its brilliant beam of light. For a moment, everything was still. Then, with a deafening roar, the darkness receded, dissipating into thin air. The ghostly figure let out a blood-curdling scream before vanishing into the ether, leaving Samantha standing alone in the empty corridor. Exhausted but triumphant, Samantha emerged from the old wing, her faith in herself restored. Though she knew that the horrors she had faced would stay with her forever, she also knew that she had faced them head-on and emerged victorious. From that day on, Samantha continued her work at St. Margaret's Hospital with a newfound sense of purpose, her courage serving as a beacon of hope for all who crossed her path. And though the memory of the ghostly figure still lingered in the dark corners of her mind, she knew that she was no longer afraid. For she had faced the darkness and emerged stronger for it. In the heart of the city stood Brookhaven Hospital, its imposing facade looming over the bustling streets like a silent sentinel. For Nurse Claire, the hospital had always been a place of healing, a sanctuary where lives were saved and miracles happened. But one fateful night would change everything she thought she knew about Brookhaven Hospital. It was a stormy evening, the rain pounding against the windows like a relentless drumbeat as Nurse Claire embarked on her nightly rounds. The corridors were eerily quiet, the only sound the echo of her footsteps as she made her way through the dimly lit halls. As Claire checked on her patients, she couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. It was as if unseen eyes followed her every move, their gaze heavy with a sense of foreboding. Brushing aside her unease, Claire pressed on, determined to carry out her duties without succumbing to fear. But as she reached the end of a deserted hallway, Claire noticed a flickering light coming from a room that had long been abandoned. Curiosity peaked, she approached cautiously, her heart pounding in her chest. Pushing open the door, Claire stepped inside and was immediately engulfed by darkness. The flickering light danced ominously on the walls, casting eerie shadows that seemed to move of their own accord. Suddenly, Claire heard a soft, raspy whisper coming from the corner of the room. It was barely audible above the sound of the storm outside, but it sent a chill down her spine nonetheless. Help me, the voice whispered, its words echoing through the empty room like a ghostly lament. Claire's blood ran cold as she realized that she was not alone. Standing in the shadows was a figure cloaked in darkness, its features obscured by the dim light. Summoning all her courage, Claire stepped forward, her heart pounding in her chest. Who are you? She asked, her voice barely more than a whisper. But before the figure could respond, Claire heard a commotion coming from the hallway outside. With a start, she turned and fled from the room, her footsteps echoing loudly in the empty corridor. As she rounded the corner, Claire stumbled upon a group of her colleagues gathered around a patient's room. They were talking in hushed tones, their faces pale with shock. What's going on? Claire asked, her breath coming in ragged gasps. One of her colleagues turned to her, her expression grave. 
It's Mrs. Henderson, she said. She's gone missing. Claire's heart sank as she realized the implications of what her colleague was saying. Mrs. Henderson had been a patient in the hospital for weeks, her condition worsening with each passing day. If she was missing, it could only mean one thing she had wandered off in the middle of the night, disoriented and confused. Determined to find Mrs. Henderson before it was too late, Claire joined her colleagues in a frantic search of the hospital. They combed through every corridor and room, calling out Mrs. Henderson's name in the hopes that she would respond. But as the hours passed and the storm outside raged on, there was still no sign of Mrs. Henderson. Desperate and exhausted, Claire began to fear the worst. Just when it seemed that all hope was lost, Claire stumbled upon a door that had been sealed shut for years. With a sinking feeling in the pit of her stomach, she pushed it open and stepped inside. What she found inside would haunt her for the rest of her days. There, huddled in the corner of the room, was Mrs. Henderson, her eyes wide with terror. Help me, she whispered, her voice barely more than a hoarse whisper. Claire rushed to Mrs. Henderson's side, her heart breaking at the sight of the frail old woman cowering in fear. Together, they made their way back to the safety of the hospital's main lobby where Claire called for help. In the days that followed, Claire couldn't shake the feeling that something malevolent lurked within the walls of Brookhaven Hospital. She couldn't explain what she had seen in the abandoned room or why Mrs. Henderson had been so terrified, but she knew that she had to find out the truth. Determined to uncover the hospital's dark secrets, Claire delved into its history, scouring old records and archives for clues. What she discovered chilled her to the bone decades ago. Brookhaven Hospital had been the site of a series of unexplained disappearances, with patients vanishing without a trace in the dead of night. As Claire dug deeper, she uncovered rumors of a malevolent presence that had haunted the hospital for generations of vengeful spirits seeking retribution for past wrongs. And though she knew that it sounded like something out of a horror story, Claire couldn't shake the feeling that there was truth to the rumors. Armed with this knowledge, Claire vowed to put an end to the hospital's dark legacy once and for all. She would confront the vengeful spirit head-on, no matter the cost, and bring peace to the souls that had been lost to its wrath. But little did Claire know that the vengeful spirit had other plans. As she prepared to face it in a final showdown, she would come to realize that some secrets are best left buried for when they are unearthed, they have the power to consume everything in their path. As Claire delved deeper into her investigation, she found herself increasingly consumed by the dark history of Brookhaven Hospital. She uncovered accounts of patients driven to madness by the hospital's oppressive atmosphere, of nurses and doctors who disappeared without a trace, leaving behind only whispers of foul play. But amidst the tales of horror and despair, Claire also discovered a glimmer of hope a legend passed down through generations of hospital staff. According to the legend, there was a way to appease the vengeful spirit that haunted the hospital, a ritual that had the power to banish it from the mortal realm once and for all. Determined to put an end to the hospital's dark legacy, Claire embarked on a quest to uncover the details of the ritual. She scoured ancient texts and consulted with experts in the occult, piecing together the fragments of information she found into a cohesive plan. With each passing day, Claire's determination grew stronger, fueled by a sense of righteous purpose. She knew that she was risking everything her sanity, her safety, perhaps even her very soul but she was willing to pay any price to rid Brookhaven Hospital of its malevolent presence. As the night of the ritual drew near, Claire prepared herself for the ultimate showdown. Armed with ancient artifacts and forbidden knowledge, she ventured into the darkest depths of the hospital, where the vengeful spirit awaited her. The air was thick with anticipation as Claire performed the ritual, her heart pounding in her chest. She spoke the incantations with conviction, channeling all her energy into the task at hand. But just as she was about to complete the ritual, a sudden chill swept through the room, causing the flames of the candles to flicker ominously. Claire's blood ran cold as she realized that something had gone horribly wrong. With a deafening roar, the vengeful spirit materialized before her, its form twisted and contorted with rage. Claire's heart sank as she realized that her plan had failed the spirit was more powerful than she had ever imagined. In a desperate bid for survival, 
Claire fought back with all her strength, wielding her artifacts against the encroaching darkness. But it was no use the spirit was relentless, its fury unmatched by anything Claire had ever seen. Just when it seemed that all hope was lost, Claire remembered something she had read in her research a weakness inherent in the spirit's cursed existence. With a surge of determination, she seized upon this knowledge, using it to weaken the spirit's hold on the mortal realm. With a final burst of energy, Claire unleashed her power upon the vengeful spirit, banishing it from the hospital once and for all. As the spirit faded into nothingness, Claire collapsed to the ground, exhausted but victorious. In the aftermath of the ordeal, Claire emerged from Brookhaven Hospital a changed woman. Though the scars of her battle with the vengeful spirit would always remain, she knew that she had faced her fears head-on and emerged stronger for it. And though the hospital's dark past would never be forgotten, Claire took solace in the knowledge that she had played a part in bringing peace to the souls that had been lost to its malevolent influence. For in the end, it was not the darkness that defined Brookhaven Hospital, but the courage of those who dared to confront it. Months passed since Claire's confrontation with the vengeful spirit at Brookhaven Hospital. Though the ordeal had left her physically and emotionally drained, she found solace in the knowledge that she had finally brought peace to the tormented souls that had lingered within its walls for so long. As life at the hospital returned to normal, Claire threw herself into her work with renewed vigor. She was determined to make a difference, to ensure that no patient would ever again fall victim to the darkness that had plagued Brookhaven for generations. But despite her best efforts to move on, Claire couldn't shake the feeling that something was still amiss at the hospital. Strange occurrences continued to haunt its corridors lights flickered inexplicably, equipment malfunctioned without cause, and patients reported seeing shadowy figures lurking in the corners of their rooms. Determined to get to the bottom of these mysteries once and for all, Claire delved deeper into the hospital's history, scouring old records and interviewing long-time staff members in search of answers. What she discovered would shake her to her core. Buried deep within the hospital's archives was a series of documents detailing a dark chapter in its past a series of experiments conducted by a group of rogue doctors who had sought to harness the power of the supernatural for their own nefarious purposes. According to the records, these doctors had performed unspeakable acts in the name of science, using innocent patients as unwitting subjects in their twisted experiments. The results had been catastrophic, unleashing forces beyond their control and plunging Brookhaven Hospital into darkness. As Claire pieced together the fragments of information she had uncovered, she realized that the vengeful spirit she had banished was only the tip of the iceberg. There were darker forces at play within the hospital forces that threatened to consume everything in their path if left unchecked. Armed with this knowledge, Claire vowed to put an end to the sinister conspiracy that had plagued Brookhaven Hospital for so long. She rallied her colleagues to her cause, forming a coalition of nurses, doctors, and staff members who were determined to root out the corruption that had taken hold of their workplace. Together, they launched a full-scale investigation into the hospital's affairs, uncovering a web of deceit and betrayal that stretched back decades. They exposed the rogue doctors responsible for the experiments, bringing them to justice and ensuring that they could never harm another patient again. But the battle was far from over. As Claire and her allies delved deeper into the secrets of Brookhaven Hospital, they uncovered evidence of a more insidious threat lurking in the shadows a darkness that had been growing ever stronger, biding its time until it could once again unleash its malevolent fury upon the world. Determined to stop it, Claire and her allies prepared for a final showdown with the forces of evil that threatened to consume them all. With courage and determination, they faced their fears head-on, knowing that the fate of Brookhaven Hospital and perhaps the world itself hung in the balance. And though the road ahead would be fraught with danger and uncertainty, Claire knew that as long as they stood together, they would prevail. For in the end, it was not the darkness that defined them, but the light that shone from within a light that would guide them through even the darkest of times.